Ask Canadians, they say they want it. <laughs> Ask the Native Americans who fought on both sides, and they'll say, not us. <laughs> they are the losers, and how can everyone else, well, it's the whole war in general. I'll do a quick history of it. We started at June 18th, 1812, for three reasons. First two had to deal with Napoleon. He started a war with England in 1803. The U.S. is neutral, trading with both sides, making a lot of money. The British and the French do not like us trading with their enemies, so they both pass laws saying it's illegal. They stop our, the British are more effective since they have the most powerful enemies. They stop our merchant ship, search our cargo, decide what we can and cannot take to France. And then they make us pay a tax on those goods. Not an import tax, not an export tax, more of a, I have 600 warships. You have 16. I'm the big kid on the block. You're the little kid. I want your lunch money. <laughs> Come here. Give me your lunch money. <laughs> and it, we're not happy. It cuts into our money we're making, but we still get a trade with France. We're not happy, but... Second reason is the French Navy. Although it is small, they continue to have battle with the British. And British sailors are tired of being shot at. The notice American merchant sailors get better pay, better food, better living conditions, and guess what? They're not getting shot at. So these British sailors, when they get the chance, they deserve. Sign up, come American merchant sailors. Get the better pay. Eat the better food. They're happy. British officers are not happy. They cannot let their men just run away like that. So as they're going through the cargo on the ships, they start recognizing people. You, sir, look very familiar. We had someone on our crew that just looked just like you three months ago. Lost them near Boston. What do you know? The merchant ship you're on just came from there. You're him. Get on board. Take you, 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 I need a power one, take you. What's your last name? What? Bible. Wow, you speak English, you must be British, get on board. <laughs> Call an impressment, forcing someone to fight in your Navy or Army. The British were doing this to their citizens, it's called a draft. Then they start doing it to American ships. U.S. complained about this, you cannot do this, you're taking our citizens. British response is, we are not taking American citizens, we're taking our deserters back. We take an American or two along the way, we're sorry, but too bad. We're more worried about Napoleon than your feelings deserve tough luck. Third reason for the war is out in the Wild West. Anyone know where the Wild West was back then? <laughs> Just before the Mississippi yeah, River? Indiana. Indiana. Louisiana. I, was, I want to hear what he said. It's not dead nowhere. I didn't think it was a uh, wild, wild west until the well, How far was our, our border? Wow. To the oh, Mississippi. Louisiana Purchase. You're close. The Mississippi. That is west. Mississippi. But the wild west is here in Ohio. Uh -huh. That's what else said. A lot of people have a hard time of thinking Ohio is wild west. But this is where people are starting to move. They want to settle here. There's already a group of here, the Native Americans. They don't want to give up their land. Be it in Kentucky, Virginia, here. Settlers are like oil and water. Or further west in the traditional Wild West, 1860s, 1870s. These two groups just do not get along. They start shooting at each other. Settlers, in this case, capture the natives' weapons, find out they're British made. So they start thinking, British are giving these natives weapons. Maybe the British are telling them also to attack us. Third reason for war. Sir, so talked a little about this beforehand. We launched three invasions of Canada. The first one out of Fort Detroit crosses into Canada. It's there for about two weeks, our most successful invasion. So General Hall, the commander, falls apart, retreats back to Fort Detroit, surrenders at his 2,000-man army, the only U.S. warship on Lake Erie, all of Michigan, without firing a shot less than two months into the war.